Good morning, brothers and sisters. Confirmation that a Christian's victory in Christ is an absolute certainty. <laughs> Let's unpack absolute certainty. I have to say first off that if you don't believe in the Bible, you are not going to believe anything I say. The book of Revelation is chaotic in the middle of it, but at the end you see Jesus coming back from heaven and the Bible describes it in Revelation 19, 11, 14. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. This is coming guys. If you don't know, if you're new to the channel, this is what's coming in the book of Revelation. His eyes were as flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. The Word of God. That's Jesus' name. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That is us, the church, and those that went before us. All the armies of the earth realise by now that he is their common enemy. They know it, they see it, and they all come after him as if they are going to take God out. <laughs> really? <laughs> and is that not what's happening on the world today? They don't care, but they will meet him, they will see him. This is the second coming. And the Bible says that with a breath of his mouth, he defeats them. A breath of his mouth. In Revelation 19, 15, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty God. That is not for Christians, by the way. That is not for tribulation saints that make it, by the way. Yes, if you miss the boat, dare I say the boat, if you miss it and you're not saved before tribulation, you still have a chance, but it's going to be murky. Now, before I go any further, the channel is about the promotion of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and the advancement of the kingdom of Father God whereby if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. You are saved instantly. The question is, do you really believe in your heart? Do not turn left, do not turn right, lest you believe in vain. But back to what we've got. Note the Christians are dressed in white. These are not garments of warfare. It is because they do not do anything but watch Jesus do it all. We watch Jesus. We go up in the rapture and we come back with him and we're at the back. Well, he does it with the voice of his mouth. How amazing is that? And Revelation 19, 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. We're not martyred. We're not martyred. You know, if you get martyred, if you're tribula in the tribulation and you come to the Lord and you get martyred, you're going home at that moment because you accepted Christ. You accepted that God sent his son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You're gone and you will be coming back at the same time with him at the second coming, this is. We're raptured before then. Let's not get confused. But garments white and clean, this is not battle attire. The Bible says that he puts them down, he destroys the rebellious, and he sets up his kingdom on earth. So where is all this going regarding what is happening on the planet now, especially in the Middle East? Well, I know how it's going. And I know how it's going to end. I know we win. I know that it is beyond any question. I can live every day with confidence God has control. We're now seeing some of the early tribulation birth pangs right now. The times of sorrows, 
we seen them on the ground. Wars, rumours of wars. We know everything is a go going on in the world today. It is common news. Or it's in background news because most of the main media is instantly done and forgotten. So you've got to watch the news, to which we do and which I will do. And you know what? I don't have to be concerned about it because God is in control. So what do we do? What do we do as Christians? That's the question. Revelation 1, 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. The time is at hand. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. He's telling us to watch. In almost every prophetic statement, there is a call to action for us today. There's a call to action for us today. Don't read part of it, which does away with the idea that prophecies are not relevant. It matters today. For example, John 14, 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. John 14, 2 is a prophetic statement and the call to action is in John 14, 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. There's the call to action. We're not to be troubled. To have, to have a mansion, you have to believe, correct? If you know what God is up to, you don't have to be troubled. We don't have to be troubled. It's all in the Bible. <clears throat> Here's another one. Hebrews 10, 25. For not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Are we not seeing the day approaching? Are we assembling ourselves together or are we fighting? But the prophecy about I have many mansions has a call to action that we should assemble. The call to action is to assemble ourselves together, exhorting one another and much more as you see the day approaching. That is the call to action in that prophecy. So don't just read the promise. Pay careful attention to the call to action. And remember, in Luke 19, 13, it says, And he has called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Call to action. Example, don't sit on your arms with your arms folded, sitting on the fence. Go after it. Go tell the people. Do whatever, brothers and sisters, that you can. I'm not asking you to do what someone else does. Just do what you can. You do your best. And stay in fellowship. And many mixed feelings about what sin is and what is doing. But let me read this. At the cross we have been saved from our sin. Period. That's when we get to heaven. We'll stand before the throne. Righteous in Jesus Christ. In our life we are being saved from the power of sin. The attacks of the enemy and everything that's coming before us. And we're fighting we're fighting and beating our bodies up to get rid of the sin and live the best life we can. So the power of sin won't grip us in this lifetime. But in one day we will be delivered from the very presence of sin. That's the end of the tribulation when Jesus comes. In John 14, 3 he says, And if you go and prepare, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am ye may be also. Are you looking forward to going home? The Bible is clear and it says we should always be ready. Always be ready, brothers and sisters. That's what it's saying. We've got to be ready every day. We've got to put on the full armour of God. As far as the rapture goes, there is nothing left to happen before Jesus comes. Nothing. The rapture is next. It's next on the cards. The Bible does not say when you see these signs, look down and be sad and heavy laden. It says in Luke 21, 28. And when you see these things begin to come, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption 
dwelleth nigh. It is nigh, brothers and sisters. I just wanted to get that message over and and to encourage people. We can only stay together, brothers and sisters. That's the best one because we can encourage each other to read the word. We can encourage each other one to look for end times. It's not being preached enough. And if it is, it's being preached in a way that it builds people up and let people down. Stay through it. Stay calm through it, brothers and sisters. Stay in the zone. Stay excited, switched on. Take the reality and run with it. Turn to Christ now, if you don't know him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I'll leave you, brothers and sisters, with may God bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, and be gracious to you this day and always. God bless.